Hello everyone, Cindy here with Monarch Mom DIY. Thank you so much for joining me today on my channel where I love to bring you the best tips and tools for creating beautiful home decor on a budget. Today I'm very excited to share with you these five easy but high-end looking fall farmhouse decor DIYs. I really hope you like what I've created today. Please give this video a big thumbs up. It really does help me to grow my channel. first DIY I am going to show you how to make a simple wood lantern using two of these hexagon signs from Michaels some wooden dowels one of these thick circles and a bead I'm also going to take six of the tumbling tower blocks here you see me using some wood glue I'm going to glue those together just to form them into an almost square rectangle that we're going to use on the top of our lantern so I'm going to take this large thick circle from Dollar Tree. I'm going to fill in the hole with some of the spackle and do that on both sides and then we'll let that dry before we sand it. And then I love these little wood, um, I think they're called shadow boxes, yeah, from Michaels. These are 99 cents all the time. So they have hexagons, squares, and rectangles I found. So um, just removing the hanger string and then also the little hanging bracket on the back, then using that same spackle to go ahead and fill in the holes. This is just one of those extra steps that just really makes your finished product look more high end. Now I am using dowels that I've had forever that I have to cut with my saw but you could very easily get one of the packs from Dollar Tree that are 12 inches long and then you would not have to do any cutting. Those are a little skinnier than these, but I think that would be completely fine for this project. I am making six dowels that are about eight and a half inches long, just because that's about half of the height of what I had. Now I want my lantern to be um, usable for any season or holiday. So I'm gonna go ahead and use my antique wax to stain all three of these pieces the two hexagons and the thick circle. These are going to be the top and the base of my lantern. So you've seen me use this before. I love it, love it, love it. I'm gonna do all the surfaces on those three pieces. Then I decided for my six dowels, my wood bead, and my little square that I made out of the tumbling tower blocks, I decided to paint those black with my Waverly chalk paint in the color that's called ink. So just go ahead and paint all of those and then let those dry as well. Now once everything is dry, we are ready to assemble our lantern. I'm taking one wood dowel, putting a little bit of wood glue on the bottom, and I'm tucking that into each of the six corners of my hexagon. So here you can see, just placing those there. And then I do end up putting a little bit of hot glue um, between the corner of the hexagon and the dowel, but those dry um, pretty sturdy. Now taking my large thick circle, I'm going to glue that to the center of my other hexagon and get that centered as much as possible. Then I'm going to put the little square of tumbling tower blocks on top of that. And then we're gonna glue our flat sided wood bead. Actually, I think it was a doll head bead on top of that. So there's so many different things you can do to build the top of your lantern. That's just what I had on hand and chose to use. Now I'm taking some little wreath, or I think this was like a candle ring and tucking that down inside along with a little pumpkin salt and pepper shaker from Dollar Tree and a few leaves. Again, this is one of those things you can put whatever you want in these. I thought it'd be also cool to make a larger version using the um, hexagon mirrors 
or pictures from Dollar Tree and that would give you a lot more room. Then just carefully tucking the top of the dowels inside the other hexagon. And you guys, this looks so high end. I was so happy with how it turned out. You could definitely add more detailing to this but I just love it and can't wait to change it out and use it for fall, Christmas, and so on. If you are stopping by for the first time and you love budget home decor DIYs, I hope you'll consider sticking around by hitting that subscribe button and then also hit the bell and choose all so that YouTube will notify you whenever I upload new content, which is once or twice each week. Our second project for today is one I have done before for other seasons. It is a mini book stack using one of these wood crates from Dollar Tree along with some paint, stickers, twine, and ribbon. So the hardest part about this project is you kind of have to wait, use the tape, and paint off each section of the crate to look like a book in the stack. So I decided my top book was going to be orange using the Waverly chalk paint in the color called pumpkin. There's so many different sayings you can put on these book stacks. Um, if you want to do Halloween or Thanksgiving, I decided to make mine just three fall type things. So my bottom section or my bottom book in my stack, I'm using hazelnut. And then for my center book, I'm using white. I just thought these were some really pretty um, neutral but colorful um, fall colors to use. Then using some of these green um, letter stickers that I had in my stash, we're gonna go ahead and put the words on our books. And I started out with pumpkins. And then we're going to add corn maze and hay rides, some fun things for the fall season. I did put a layer of matte finish Mod Podge over the stickers to make sure they don't come off. And then just so the finish of my book stack was uniform, I did go ahead and do the Mod Podge all the way around my book stack. Once that was dry, I'm gonna put a little dab of hot glue inside and attach the end of my jute twine. And then once that's secure, wrap it around about five times or so. Doesn't have to be all uniform. And then once you trim the end, you'll go ahead and glue that other end inside the crate as well. For my last little touch to our book stack, I'm taking some of this black and white gingham ribbon from Hobby Lobby and just making a small bow that I'm gonna go ahead and glue to the top of my jute twine. And here's our finished mini book stack. I plan on putting this in my tiered tray for the fall. I just love how you can modify this DIY for any holiday or season, depending on colors and words. DIY number three is going to be a fun fall truck sign. I'm using a wood circle from Hobby Lobby, some paints, this standing wood truck from Dollar Tree along with some ribbon and fabric. Now you can buy these at Hobby Lobby like I showed three 10 inch circles for under five dollars or use the back of one of the Dollar Tree circle signs. This is just what I had in my stash so that's what I'm going to use and I'm giving it a coat of Waverly chalk paint in plaster. I am loving this teal color with orange for the fall this year. And so I'm gonna give my truck a little coat of that. You could take this apart and use the two pieces of the truck for two different signs, but I kind of wanted to make it stick out 3D. So I did paint the inside as well. Now these pumpkins are from a fall truck last year that I had, I think made into a Christmas truck or something. So I had these pumpkins that I kept and I'm going to put these in the back of this smaller truck, but I had to um, trim them and overlap them in order to make them fit in this smaller truck. So using my pumpkin colored chalk paint, I'm gonna give each of these pumpkins just one coat and then they'll be ready to add to our project. 
Now, once my circle was dry, I did decide I wanted it to look kind of like palette wood. So I just marked off every two inches on my 10 inch circle. And I'm just drawing the lines here to make our circle, like I said, look like it's cut out of palette wood. Then using one of my black paint markers, I'm just going to freehand um, go over those lines and it's okay if they're a little shaky because we're going to kind of paint over them and sand them and such. So here just using a sanding sponge from Dollar Tree, you can see it's kind of smearing it, which is the look I'm going for. I want my sign to look a little worn and old. So just go ahead and sand the lines and then over the entire circle. Now taking some mineral chalk paint and a chip brush, I'm going to dry brush some of this gray color. Again, just another tip and a little um, extra thing you can do to give your sign that worn look. Then I did take my sanding sponge again and just kind of blended everything together until I was happy with how it looked. Coming back to my truck, I'm going to use my truffle chalk paint just to paint the rails on the bed of the truck and both sides and down into the inside. I did not want any unfinished wood to show when you looked at the sign um, with the two layers of the truck. Then taking my black paint marker, I'm going to go ahead and color in where the tires would be. Um, if you can't tell, the center of the tires is a hole. So I'm going to paint this black and around the edges. And then I'm also going to do the black on the inside tire. There you can see so that you'll just see black when you look at the tires. Then I'm also going to just add a little bit of detailing kind of where the door is, the bumper, kind of around the windows a little bit and around the hood of the truck. There's lots of um, things you can look on online. Just kind of do whatever you feel looks good. Then taking my very sad silver paint marker that was running out, I did go ahead and paint or color the bumpers. What do you call that? The rims around the wheels? I don't even know. That part <laughs> in silver on my truck as, as well as the front and back bumpers. Now, I love showing different ways to add wording to signs. If you, especially if you don't have a Cricut, you can print out wording on your computer and then just use carbon tracing paper and go over it and it'll transfer to your sign. Then I'm gonna take one of my oil-based Sharpie paint markers in orange and I'm just gonna go around that two times until I'm happy with how it looks. So my sign says, happy fall, y'all. And then taking my huge pumpkin, I'm gonna hot glue this to the, uh, I guess you'd call that the far side of the truck bed. And then the smaller one to the front of the truck bed. And they kind of overlap and that way they both fit in the back of the truck. Then we're just going to use wood glue and hot glue to glue our truck on. But first I am going to give a layer of matte finish Mod Podge just so that none of our paint or the wording comes off and we just have a nice uniform finish to our sign. Now we'll use wood glue and hot glue to attach our truck to the sign and then add one more finishing touch before we are finished with this DIY. Now using some burlap ribbon from Dollar Tree as well as some fabric I think I got at Walmart last year. I'm going to just make what I call a crisscross bow. Um, so you're just making X's basically and layering the ribbon. And then once you have what you want, we're going to use some jute twine to tie it in the center and make it a really cute little bow. You'll see that top layer of the burlap ribbon. I did cut it a little skinnier and then tying it with the jute twine will make it um, in that bow shape. Thank you. 
So then we're just gonna trim the twine and then go ahead and hot glue that kind of to the top but off to the side of our sign. But I wanted one more thing. I wanted to cut a skinny strip of the fabric that I'm going to tie into a bow, kind of like I did with the black and white ribbon. And we're gonna glue this on top of the X-shaped bow, the cross bow that we made, just for that last little added touch and pop of the orange color. Lastly, once our bow and everything is on, we'll take a small length of jute twine. I tie a knot in either end and then go ahead and hot glue that to the back of our sign so that we can hang it on a wall. And here's our finished sign. I love it so much. Like I said, I'm loving that teal and orange this year for fall. And I love how the truck pops out from the sign. Some of you have reached out wanting to support me and my channel. So I do have a link in the description box to buymeacoffee.com. You can choose to support my channel there. So again, it will help me to be able to bring you new content each and every week. For my next project, I'm gonna show you an easy way that you can upcycle a plate or a charger from Dollar Tree just using some scrapbook paper. And I'm also gonna use these wood words from Hobby Lobby. Now I got this plate on clearance for like 225. It's that particle board. But you could also do this with any of the charger plates from Dollar Tree as well. So the first thing I'm going to do is the paint was a little um, scuffed up. So I am going to just go over that with my plaster chalk paint. And then using the back of my plate, I'm just kind of bending and creasing my scrap of paper just to show where I should cut the circle. Now, unfortunately, you're gonna see here, I'm gonna have to do this twice because once I cut this circle and tried to put it in the center, that circle was a little bit smaller. So no big deal, I just get it in there and then I'm gonna use my fingernail again this time to make a slightly smaller circle and then go ahead and I will cut that one out and then it will fit into the space of the plate. So, you know, kind of learn as you go. And I just love this scrap of paper. It's from Hobby Lobby also, normally 69 cents, but I buy it when it's half price. So I'm gonna put just a layer of Mod Podge down on the center of the plate and then go ahead and press that scrapbook paper circle down onto our plate and let that dry. Like I said, I got these words last fall from Hobby Lobby for $3.99 regular price. You get two thankfuls, two gratefuls, and two blessed. So I decided to use thankful, and I'm going to make it a little bit darker using my antique wax, just brushing it on, and then very carefully wiping it. Um, these words are a little fragile, so you just wanna make sure you're not breaking the letters apart. I really hope they have these again this year at Hobby Lobby. I haven't looked at their fall um, craft supplies yet, but I think they're a really great deal, especially if you get them at 40% off. Then I'm just gonna take my hot glue and attach the word right in the center of our plate. Now that is all I'm going to do with this. I love the simplicity of it. You could add some jute twine or nautical rope around the center. You could add some more color like that green if you wanted to, but I just love, like I said, the simplicity and neutrality of this DIY. Today's last DIY is one I have done before, but I just want to remind you of it because it is so simple to make for each season. 
I'm going to use 15 one gallon paint sticks, some paint, some Mod Podge, some jute twine, and you can use any calendar image you want. This one does happen to be one of the newer calendars, but it's got some really fun designs. But I wanna show you, this is one I got. It's from last year, not from Dollar Tree, but look at how pretty that is. You can just look for calendar images or even print something from a Google search on your computer. Now I'm gonna go 12 paint sticks across. You can see I'm going top, down, top, down, as far as the indented part, and then getting them all lined up and square. Taking my other three paint sticks, I'm going to just hot glue them across the back to hold our entire sign together. So right here, you're, you've got a $1.50 with the paint sticks and then whatever image you choose to use. And like I said, you can make this for any season or holiday. You could do antique wax, but I decided to use this moss color of chalk paint. I do also like this color for fall and for Christmas actually. It's kind of a farmhouse Christmas green. And we're just gonna give our paint stick sign a good coat of this until it's dry. Once it is, I'm going to then put a layer of matte finish Mod Podge and then lay my image down. Now, if you've watched me do this before, you know I like to usually spray the paper with uh, my spray bottle so that it doesn't make those little creases like that. I didn't have it nearby, but I thought it added to the character of the sign just to have those little bit of wrinkles in the image. Then to frame our sign, I'm going to take some jute twine from Dollar Tree and stick that down and kind of make a frame. I'm gonna go about eight times around the bottom and then attach it with glue. Then I'm gonna do the top and then each of the two sides. I'm kind of trying to cover up where the calendar image and um, the paint stick sign meet each other, just so it looks a little more finished with the jute twine frame. So now here you can see with all four sides having the jute twine, then the last thing we need to do, like we did on the fall truck sign, is take a piece and put a knot on either end, and then we're gonna hot glue those knots down to the back of our sign, and then this can hang, or it can also stand like on a mantle or in a tiered tray. Again, you can take this idea and make it not holiday, not seasonal if you'd like, but it's just a really fun, simple way. And I did sell quite a few of these types of signs at my craft show last year. Again, thank you so much for joining me today. Please go ahead and like I said, give that video a thumbs up so that YouTube knows to show it to other people. Also, make sure you let me know in the comments which of these DIYs you enjoyed the best, and I'll see you guys next time. Take care.